Hey garden lovers, are you loving the cooler weather? I sure am. And loved the recent rain that we got. Was very excited about that. I had to put off working on this video due to a pretty bad head cold, the worst I've had in a couple years. So I'm probably gonna sound congested, but gotta get this November planting, sowing, and growing video underway because we're already well through middle of November. Also wanted to mention our fall seed giveaway is closed. Seeds will be in the mail soon. Thank you to everyone that participated. If you commented, send me some SCG seeds in our October planting, sowing, and growing video. Make sure to check your comment for details on how to get your free SCG herb packets. Look for my reply for details and before we get to it, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified to make sure not to miss our monthly planting, sowing, and growing videos, our growing tips, and lots of garden inspiration. And we recently added an article of the importance of soil health. Head over to www.southerncaliforniagardening.net to check it out. All right, first we'll start with our trial updates and then we'll go over what we are planting, sowing, and growing now in SoCal. All right, so the update on the lettuce trial is we're going to start over. We've had too many issues. The latest one, we're finding grubs all throughout our, our beds. I could bet anything if I dig up one of these smaller heads of lettuce, there's gonna be a grub under their munching on the roots, which is stunting its growth. We just applied our fall beneficial nematode application. So those guys will be on their way out very soon. Should take about 14 days to start working. And the other day I was planting and it was like everywhere that I lifted up a shovel of soil, there were three or four grubs. So they're, they're infested in all of our beds which is no surprise. We had hundreds of beetles come through our garden, but really got to get into a place where I'm applying the beneficial nematodes earlier. But you could see here, this one is solar flare. It's done outstanding. When we had upper 90s, uh, maybe about three weeks ago, a little under three weeks ago, solar flare was doing great while Black Seeded Simpson bolted right away. So probably end of May, we will restart our heat tolerant lettuce variety trial. Temps can at times get into the 90s in June, so that'll be a good time to start this trial again. Here are some varieties that have proven to be heat tolerant that we've grown over the years. This one is Sierra, and it's definitely a top performer for heat tolerance. This one actually planted itself. I had a bolted Sierra growing in this container. The seeds fell, and a bunch of little baby lettuce sprouts popped up right in the middle of summer. I didn't thin all the baby lettuce sprouts in this container, and then in this other container, I thinned them to one and it grew a beautiful head of lettuce. We've been harvesting the outer leaves and this guy's seen temperatures in the upper 90s and probably low 100s. It gets a little bit of water from the sprinklers each day. You could pick these up and have them ready for the upcoming spring 2024 growing season and know that they're going to perform well for you. And speaking of lettuce, while we're on the topic, before I head over to our cilantro trial, there are some great varieties that can take very low temperatures. So if you live in a part of the country where you experience frost, we do as well. We are at 1900 above sea level. So we see temps in the upper 20s several times a year. There are many, many great varieties out there. Lots of them have labeled that they are frost tolerant. You could pretty much depend on Butterhead being frost tolerant. 
if properly hardened off, they could withstand temperatures down to about 20 degrees. And here is the update on the cilantro trial, which really nothing much has changed except it's growing fabulous because we are in the cooler season. No signs of bolting and it's been growing here for several months. And then here we have slow bolt. You could see it was started 827. And then right next to it, we also started some more calypso so that they could grow side by side. And we'll just watch them as the months go on. But this is definitely one of those that I'm gonna wanna start probably end of May, just like we're gonna restart the lettuce trial. So we'll start slow bolt and calypso side by side and then see how they do as far as bolting once the temps get up into the 90s. And as I mentioned earlier, we just did our fall beneficial nematode application. We have to do it twice a year. It's just part of the maintenance to battle grubs. And we are doing a trial. We want to record how long it takes for the beneficial nematodes to start killing off the grubs. From what I've read, it's about 14 days. And we shared this information in our October planting, sowing, and growing video. But since we're applying it, we're going to share it again. We get ours from Arbico. They're an excellent company. You could feel confident that your beneficial nematodes will show up alive. And they'll also show up in a gel ice pack so that they're kept cool. Then we refrigerate them until we're ready to use. Since we have such a large area to cover, I'm going to end up making three batches. The first batch, I poured about a third of the beneficial nematodes in this watering can, filled it to the top with water, mixed it around very well, and then from there I'm going to divvy out just a small portion into this other watering can. Fill that watering can up to the top and then apply. I'm going to end up getting about seven watering cans from this main batch. Then I'll mix up another batch and get seven more. They recommend applying in the morning, early morning or dusk. We apply in the evening. I really want those guys to start getting down in the soil throughout the night before the next day, you know, it heats up and the soil tends to dry out. And they do recommend to keep the soil moist for about 10 days if possible. Our temps were pretty steady for about a week and a half at the mid 80s. And then I saw in the forecast a period where we were going to come into low 70s and lots of cloudy weather. So that is why we put it off because that is the ideal weather to apply beneficial nematodes. And we talked about this in our October video, but Grubs can really do a lot of damage to young plants, and especially if you direct sow. If the grubs locate where the young roots are and they come up and start munching on them, they can either stunt your plant and it's just not gonna grow to its full potential, or it could wipe the plant out completely. You know, if the root system is small, and they start chewing on it, then obviously the plant can't continue to grow without its root system. All right, now on to what we are planting, sowing, and growing in inland SoCal. There are lots of herbs growing all around the garden, like basil, dill, arugula, thyme, oregano, parsley, but only a few of those can withstand frost. So if frost is in your near future, like it is for us, the only herbs we're gonna be starting right now are arugula, here is a beautiful variety we're trying from Baker Creek, Red Dragon, love the red veins going through the leaves. And you could see here, they are frost hardy. And it's a great time to start more cilantro and parsley. Parsley is excellent for getting rid of garlic breath. In this bed, we have kale growing. We've got some lettuce varieties that could take very low temperatures in the 20s. We have leeks scattered throughout this bed. We've got some peas trellising and we've got some room. So we're going to add some more broccoli. So succession planting broccoli. We'll pop in some Brussels sprouts as well. 
and we are succession planting kohlrabi so we'll get some more started in this bed here's some kohlrabi growing at different stages some is just about ready to harvest as we harvest it'll make room to add some spinach my beautiful mama helped me get our onions planted for the season. We are growing short day, white, yellow, and red. Here is a list of cool season veggies that we're growing now and we'll be able to take temperatures down to about mid 20s. And here are some veggies we're growing but we'll need some protection when the frost hits. We picked up these incredibly beautiful poppy varieties from Baker Creek, and we'll be sprinkling them around this month. We're getting the seeds out in December because poppy seeds germinate better when exposed to freezing and thawing conditions. And speaking of freezing conditions, we have quite a few trees that need some protection. This is an Alfonso mango tree. It grows many mangoes. It's growing next to a building, so it probably has enough protection, but don't want to take chances this year because last year we almost lost our mango tree on the hill. So frost really affects them, and this plant jacket is amazing it's got a zipper so it's really easy to apply and then it's got drawstrings at the bottom so that you could secure it especially if you live in a windy area we've had those guys take off and go flying into the neighbor's yard and now that most of our fruit trees are starting to go to sleep it's time to get them pruned just about all of them will be going into hibernation except for our citrus so over the next couple months, we'll be pruning our fruit trees. We want to keep them a manageable size. Because of the volume of beetles that come through here, and they really can destroy a lot of fruit, so we're going to for sure be putting bird netting over our fruit trees every season now. And in order to do that, without it being too complicated, we're just going to keep them topped at about 10 feet. Most of our fruit trees are still pretty young, so they will be easy to prune. And then the more mature ones, like our nectarine and apricot, we remove most of the inward facing branches. This opens up the tree so that it gets more airflow. We'll also be shortening branches that are too long so that they don't get weighed down by too much fruit and break. And we'll be looking for branches that V off into a second branch and we'll be removing one of those. That also can add too much weight that the branch won't be able to support and could possibly end up breaking. We sowed some radish seeds just a little under a week ago. We're growing Cherry Bell, Bacchus, and Crimson Giant. And these guys are just starting to pop up out of the soil. They grow so fast, these guys will mature before we see any frost. Then we'll get another round sowed in our cattle panel raised bed where they'll get some protection for when the frost does hit. And we are starting some Asian veggies. Benihushi is frost hardy, beautiful and delicious. Purple Lady is not frost hardy, but it grows super fast so we will get it sewed in our cattle panel raised bed where it will see some protection. And I also love Violetta. This packaging says some varieties are suitable for winter gardening, but I don't believe that this variety is because it's similar to a purple lady. So we'll get this one sewed in our cattle panel raised bed as well. And it's time to prep all of our growing areas for the upcoming spring 2024 growing season. So I stopped by Paradise Garden Center to make sure that they still have organic compost in bulk. They do, so we will be picking up a couple of yards 
and they now also have a 50-50 mix. So an organic soil and organic compost mixture. We buy bulk compost because our homemade compost isn't enough for all of our growing areas. And we buy it in the winter because this compost is still hot, so it needs to be spread out so that it could completely cure over the next couple months before we plant directly in it. Hot compost, basically manure that is not fully cured, will burn the little veggie roots. And a way you could tell if it's fully cured is by grabbing a handful and if it smells like soil, it is fully cured. If it has some smell of manure, then it's still hot and needs to cure longer. It's very cool that they now have a pre-mixed option. Here are their prices. All right, that's it for now. Make sure to follow us on Instagram or TikTok. We try to add weekly content of what we are doing around the garden mixed in with some tips and garden beauty. And hit the subscribe button for more videos on how to grow food in a hot deserty climate. And remember, something doesn't come from nothing. This is a mind blowing creation. I hope you guys enjoy your week and enjoy your garden.